What are the five features in WordWall that most teachers don't know about and don't use? I've been involved in doing some training with WordWall with the organization recently, and I'm gonna focus on the five features that I think through that training most teachers don't know about. This is really gonna save you a lot of time. It's gonna really open your eyes to many things in WordWall that perhaps you didn't realize you can do. Let's get started. As usual, if you like the video, please like it please share it, please comment on it, and of course, join me on my YouTube channel. Just one quick thing, if you don't know WordWall and you're looking, first of all, to learn about WordWall because this is not training you in WordWall, it's looking at five of the more advanced features, then there is a video on the screen now that you can watch that will take you through how to use WordWall. We're gonna get on now with the five features most teachers don't use. Now the first trick I'm gonna show you is one I absolutely love. You're not limited to only doing this, for example, with Word or WordPad, but you could do it also with perhaps Notepad or even something like Google Sheets or Excel. If you've got a list of words, and I've got here some sentences actually, one, two, three, four, I can just copy those. So I'm actually using, well, it's like Word that I've got here, it's called WordPad. I'm just gonna copy those sentences. I'm now gonna jump over to WordWall and I'm gonna click on Create Activity. And I'll do Unjumble. Now, normally with Unjum, we have to write all the sentences, but watch this. I could just click and paste, and it will immediately create the four sentences for me. And then I can click on, obviously it's a good idea to give it a title. So new sentences, and suddenly I have made a new set of cards. So you can import in from different places. Now I'm gonna show you another really good example of how this works. Now the second way of working with WordWall, again, time-saving, is particularly good if you're working in language, you're learning languages. Now, what I've got here is that I'm working with Google Translate, and let's say that there are some centers in, sentences in English that I wanna learn in, Panish, in, in Polish. So I'm gonna write, I eat sandwiches for lunch, okay? And I get the sentence in Polish. Now what I can do is I can add that sentence to a list of sentences that I'm learning. So if I click here, it will add that sentences to the collection of sentences that I'm learning, okay? Now how do I find those sentences? Well, I find them here by clicking. And it shows me a big list of sentences that I'm currently learning, okay? So whenever I, find a sentence either in Polish that I wanna learn the translation or in English because I wanna know how to say it in Polish. I use Google, Google Translate. I click on the star to add the words to a list. Now this is the powerful thing that you can do with WordWall. If I, for instance, wanted to bring those words into WordWall, watch this. All I need to do is click on this button here, okay? And then click on import and it's gonna work in more or less the same way as the last time I showed you using Word. This time though, we're gonna be bringing in the words from Google Sheets. So what happens is it creates the list of words and in fact here I've got them in Polish and here I've got them in English. Now what I do is I always make this a little bit wider just so that I can copy them correctly because you only need the two um, sections in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click down, hold on the shift key, on the on the select key, and I'm just gonna select these sentences. Now I don't have to select them all, I might just say this many, and I'm gonna press copy, okay? Now I'm gonna jump over now to WordWall. Now what, what we need is some kind of matching activity. So we're gonna create activity and we'll do match up. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste all these words in, watch this and it adds in the word in Polish on one side and the word in English on the other. So I'm gonna call this Polish match, and then immediately we can play this game. So if I was to now click, once I've done that, click on done, I've now got a matching game that is going to allow me to match sentences in English with sentences in Polish, or sentences in Polish with sentences in English. Super, super quick, and that is by using Google Translate. So remember, you need to click on the star to add the sentences, and then you need to click on here 
to open the words in Google export when you do that you need to click twice click first and then click here that is something that I do all the time now if you want to learn more about the way that Google Translate works because I've just showed you a great example of how you can use Google Translate I'm going to put a video on the screen now really going to show you some great tricks that you can do with Google Translate and how you can connect it with things like WordWall and with things like Quizlet and YouTube etc. Now this next trick that I'm going to show you is perhaps one of my favorite ones. If you look at this game at the moment, the way that this game is organized is you have to drag in the correct word and add it on. Okay, so it's basically a translation from, in my case, from Polish to English. Now, did you realize that you have these switch template options over here? You can actually change this into a different game. Let me give an example. I'll just do a really simple one. I'm going to click on find the match. Now, if I click on that, it changes the game. And if we play that game, you'll now see it's a completely different game. Now the interesting thing is not only can you change the game, so however, so and I've now got to click on whichever one I think it is here, okay? So I'd have to look really, really quickly and then click on the right button. So the game has instantly changed. But what about if I wanted to save that as a new game? And this is actually something that I do all the time. So click on edit content and then click on duplicate. And then you just need to give it a new title because obviously you've now changed this game. So I'm gonna call this click and match because this is now a new game now the old game still exists the, the old game will still be there but you've now got using the same content and click on done afterwards a new game and if i was now to go to my activities you'll see that that new game has now been created so the ability to click on the templates let me just very quickly show you again if i went to this game here on capital cities for example and i might want to jump and change this for example for a balloon pop so i click on balloon pop and of course i can start the game if I wanted to save this new game, I would click on edit content and duplicate. And now the game would be duplicated as a balloon pop game. Um, really clever trick and one that I use all the time. Word was a really an ideal tool for formative assessment, checking, assess checking understanding. If you're looking for a more gamey based type activity to do in class with your students, I would really recommend Socrative. It's a free tool. I've used it for many years. It's quite easy to use and it's popular with students because it has a kind of race part to it, which makes it quite good fun. If you're interested in that video, I'll put it on the screen now and you might find that video really interesting. I'm now going to show you one other aspect of um, Word Wall that I really like. Just a super quick break from the video. If you like what you're seeing and you want more free videos, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads of stuff on the front page, particularly for language teachers. If you scroll down to the bottom, there's also my blog, which I update on a regular basis. You can also find out about my courses here on the front page. If you want to follow my work, the best thing to do is to sign up to the newsletter. You'll also get the chance to join me in some of the free webinars that I run. Uh, you'll also get updated on all the latest videos, the blog posts, the online courses, etc. Of course, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. And finally, you can contact me from the website. Thanks ever so much. Let's get back to the video. Now the next idea that I'm going to show you is a real time saver. If you click on community, you are allowed to search for other people's games and either use them or make copies of them so that you've got them saved in your activities or even make copies of them and then edit them so that you can use them, which is often what I do. So you can just click and do a search here at the top. I'm just going to search for something. Let's say, for example, in, let's say furniture in English. So I just write the sentence that I'm looking for, write the search terms of furniture in English. Hopefully lots of ideas are going to come up. They do. If I then wanted to say choose a set of words or let's say, for example, let's have a look at this one. This one looks like it's about, fur about furniture. I can click on it. First thing I can do is I can test it. And see if I'm happy with the game okay 
Okay, so in this game, I've got to click on the correct word. Now, if I really like this game, what I can do is click on edit content. Okay, and I can make some changes if I want to, but if I don't want to make any changes at all, I'm going to call this Russell because this is now going to be my copy, Russell. Okay, and this is a new copy that has been made from that version. Now, often what I do is go in and edit a few things, but if I don't want to do that, I would click on done. And now I've got a copy of that activity. The whole idea of WordWall is to try to save you time so that you can share content and find sh content that other teachers have created. And obviously that's one of the reasons why when you create content, please make your content public so that other teachers can access it, okay? So remember, all you need to do, and don't forget you can also change the game as well so let's say for example you didn't want to play that as a quiz but you wanted to do it as a random will or you can click on show all and see all all the options here let's say for example I wanted to do this one simply as a uh, airplane game I can click on airplane and then play it as an airplane game remember if I want to save this new version again I would have to click on edit content and duplicate the whole idea is to use the community as a way of you finding content and then as I've said you can edit it or you can just simply save it exactly as it is so that you've then got a copy or you can just play the activity as well you have all of the options but the community is something really worth learning for example if I was to put in here French let's put French numbers okay so enter lots of websites come out with the numbers I click on an activity that I'm looking interested in if I wanted to play that game or share that with my students, I could do that. I could set it as an assignment. But more interestingly, I might click on edit content if I like the game. And if I don't want to make any changes, I can leave it as it is. Just click on done. And now I will have a copy of that game. Okay, really can save you time. Now the last feature I'm going to show you, and there are a number of other features that I could show you, but I'm going to focus on is just the settings because a lot of people don't realize that over the years, Word War has added many opportunities to add settings to certain games. And let me show you what I want to explain to you. If you take, for example, this game here and we just click on start, if you notice that at the moment this game has got a certain number of lives and a certain number of minutes to play the game, and how we do that is here, if we scroll down, one thing you can always change the design of the game by clicking on any of these, and you can change the font size as well. But the thing I wanna focus on is here. For example, we can say in this game, you can only get two lives and we're gonna wait for answer, or no, we can make it move quite quickly. So if I change this, to make the speed of the game much quicker now and only give you two lives and we're counting up. Uh, we can click apply to activity. Um, for example, this one here, we've got the timer. We could even put the timer down to, to say, for example, to one minute or two minutes. If we click on apply to activity, what you'll notice now is that you've only got two lives when the game starts, not three. Notice up here. And you're going to have a much shorter period of time between the question coming on the screen and then disappearing. So you can speed up and slow down the speed of the delivery of the game. Now, let me just quickly go through that again. Just come down here. The two, I mean, I work with quite a lot of these, but the ones that I particularly like are, are the number of lives. That is the number of incorrect questions that you can get before the game finishes and also the speed. So we can slow it right down or you can put it quite fast, which means that people have to answer the questions very quickly. So I really like these settings and originally they weren't there. They've been things that have been added over the years. If you're looking more for audio, and I know that Word will we'll be introducing audio in the future. I'm going to put a link on the screen now to a great website for anyone learning vocabulary that likes to have the audio as well. You might find that really interesting uh, because you can both sit, read the words and hear them at the same time. Okay, really hope you like that video. Please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. As I've said, lots of more videos. Just scroll along the front page and look at the blog at the bottom lots and lots of videos that might be useful particularly to language teachers 
Don't forget my courses are here on the front page and you can also sign up and follow my work on my newsletter and that way you get updated with everything called the videos, the blog posts, the free online webinars that we often run as well as the courses. Of course you can sign up and subscribe to my YouTube channel and you can contact me from the website. I'm going to leave some more videos on the screen now that you might find useful.